So, welcome to my presentation about uh, automation in the world of project. Uh, maybe at the beginning, a few words about me. I started my career about 15 years ago or even later. I started in a big corporation which called Motorola, probably everyone knows. Then switched to medium-sized company Widow. And after that, I joined a very small startup, Cognified. It was about 12 years ago, and I'm still there. Uh, we transformed from a small startup to mature organization, which deliver projects for the biggest companies on the world, like Ford, for, for example. And uh, most of years, I was there on the role head of QA practice. But last few years, I spent as a development manager. Uh, outside the work, together with a with few of my friends, we uh, we starting organize Poznań Testing and Quality Group. It's the older, oldest meetup in Poland about testing. And we organize almost uh, 60 meetings. And last few years, we recording uh, podcast, Testing Parrot. Unfortunately, it's in Polish, so sorry for that, but yeah. Okay, so it was about me and what I'm going to talk about. First, I would like to introduce you to my world, the world of projects, uh, because Cognified is a software house company. And I'm going to show you a little about our experience with uh, we're selling test automation, yeah? So how we start to approach to this, how we talk with clients and where we are now. Then if you start selling, you do more and more test automation. You start building your frameworks, tools, and thinking how to reuse them to be faster, faster and cheaper, of course. And when you start doing a lot, you have your own tools, frameworks, everything. How to deliver it inside the projects, how it change uh, in Cognified against uh, through those about 10 years. Yeah, and then we just summarize and I hope there will be some questions so I could answer for them for, them, for you. So a little about Cognified. Uh, we are, as I said, we are a project-based company. What does it mean? We deliver about several projects, totally different projects about size or time. Uh, it can be projects that are 50 engineers or it can you can have a project which are which you have four engineers, yeah? Just example, they are totally different size. And we're working mostly on web, uh, where we use uh, CMSs, so content management systems, mostly done by Adobe or Sitecore. And we customize it and integrate with almost everything what it can be, yeah? So we mostly deliver those top level, uh, if you think about uh, different systems. So short intro, and let's go to our main subject, so saying test automation. How we start? So we start to, to talk with cl our clients about ROI. Yeah, it's uh, it was uh, quite strange, especially as we had we don't have uh, test scripts. After a few years, we decide no. We don't want to go with typical approach with test scripts. We go to exploratory testing. And there was another small changes inside our projects, pro projects and our approach to quality, because uh, we stop using uh, we stop using just testers for testing. Yeah, we invite uh, developers to to that work. So in this case it was very, very difficult for us uh, to deliver this ROI because we, were, we weren't able to, to to count it, yeah? Because mostly you just count. You have 20 test scripts, uh, execute of this time is uh, 20 minutes, so you have some cost, and if you automate and you run those 20, 30 times, you can just very simply calculate the ROI, yeah? But we weren't able to do that. So another approach that we try with our clients was uh, the coverage. So we're starting to discuss with clients uh, how how you, how many test cases 
we are going to delete or how many things we are going to cover by our test automation. So we start talking about code coverage. Yeah. So then we at the beginning we start we, we try when we had uh, about test cases coverage too. Then we comes to requirement coverage, but uh, in uh, agile way requirement it's a quite white word and it's very difficult to define. So we start talking about feature coverage. But when you start to talk about coverage, okay, so what coverage do we have? 10 percentage, 20, 80, and what is a good answer, yeah? Especially when you're talking more with marketing guys, it was very difficult for them or even for most of our people. So this way still stopped working or didn't work uh, even at the beginning, yeah? Uh, as a result of those uh, talks, we just got the questions even like, can you just write a good quality code from the beginning so you don't need any testing or any test automation? Yeah? It's the question that we heard from our clients. So it's cause that we weren't able to, to sync our test automation. And then we thinking what to do and how to approach that. And we ask for us a question, it's a very important one, question. Does this automation bring business value for our clients? Yeah. And uh, it's a very important question that you can ask yourself when you think about this, this automation. So when you ask those questions, just not, don't just don't want it to answer yes, no. We start to define what the business value is for our clients. Yeah. So let's look about the business values that we have. So one of the main business value was the delivery approach. So how many, how number of releases that our clients uh, would like to have from us, yeah? Or how often does they wanted to have continuous delivery approach? Does they need a release that we deliver production ready? Because uh, in fact, not each our client wanted from us production ready release. So accept a lot of issues, another not. Another question was how do you want, how fast you want to change your website or what do you want to change on the website? Another is time to release, yeah? So can I accept on some issues, some issues on our software, on our application or not? Or another is lead time. So how fast I need to deliver you a new feature? It's because there are uh, challenges from the business, yeah? Again, uh, another question was availability. And uh, just example, one of the answers was a blue-green deployments, yeah? Ex another talks that we understand by a client as a business was extendability and maintainability. Because it's very important to ask clients, what do you want to do with those applications? Do you want to extend it? So adding new features. Do you want to maintain it in very easy way? Or do you just don't want to make any changes on that? Just deliver and forget, yeah? And those were some business values for our clients, which clients say that is very important for them that we had. And not always, and we never had this automation. Of course, there are another things like business critical areas that clients always say that it's just guys, this business logics like reservations has to always work. All others, in fact, if it will not work 10 minutes, I'm, or even one day, I'm really fine with that. Yeah. Or, or, or there was another client changes like AB testing. Yeah. So I would like just to, test some kind of the journeys just for a few in a few of, of our clients just to see if it makes sense or not. So where we are and we, what we understanding by that. That in if if we look about this business value like availability for example the solution for our clients because I have uh, almost 100 percentage availability yeah wasn't this automation, but uh, we start talking about blue-green deployments, yeah? Which gives you the possibility to be always uh, up. Or for example, when client, our client says, if we just return to the previous slide, uh, 
that's very important for them are quick changes on website but what kind of the changes it was just images or adding new blog or whatever or changing some menu it caused that okay so let's do the or let's give him cms or, or some components autorable and that this was the answer so we couldn't find as an answer, answer test automation okay what caused that? That we understanding that our test automations does not bring business value for our client. So we stop talking about test automation with clients because they wanted to talk about business values. So something which allow them to, to be better in their business, not just about test automation because it's just one of the solution, but is the solution that not always uh, makes sense or even is the best the better one as i said previously there are other solutions like blue green deployment some changes in architecture using cms or whatever which solves the problems not just improve the test automation i can even say one tip from one client that i consult uh, they have an issue with uh, with quality and they invest a lot of money to solve those issue in test automation yeah and after five months they use the metric which they defined the quality was exactly the same the metric was number of issues raised by their users on some service portal yeah so again it shows that this automation doesn't bring values does not solve that okay so but we understanding that test automation does not bring value yeah and here just a question uh, after the my presentation i set up a pool there is a, you have you should have this on your panel on the right and if you just uh, mark if you agree with me or not after the presentation it will be great okay but we have to propose that we are the expert so we have to propose a solution even if we propose this automation we start understanding that then when we know what exactly client need we can go and say and even say that we guys we deliver you 80 percentage of coverage on this module but other modules are not important so they will be just 20 just to be sure that it's working and something that we need from technical point of view yeah okay and what we learn not to ask with our clients because uh, it does not make sense or doesn't give you anyone is as i said ne we never ask now do you need this automation you ask what you have the business values what you what business uh, issues you would like to solve and then we are just coming with some solution and as i said we don't talk about coverage and things like other two or suggest this automation as a remedy for all quality or delivering issues yeah because it's not and it's something that you learn and talk okay so when we when we change our approach to test automation we starting to do it more and more in our project so when you starting to do more and more test automation yeah uh, we start with, to beat our frameworks and tools and of course we understanding very quickly that building tools and frameworks when you're building it's cool to re reuse them across different projects especially as uh, we specialize on these adobe or sitecore solutions so they are quite similar our projects or there are uh, common parts thanks to this there is a area to reusing yeah and what so what the advantages of reuse of course it's cheaper yeah because you beat something once it's faster because you have a framework tools you can just starting writing you don't need to be that at the beginning <clears throat> and uh, it allow us to use the same already existing infrastructure because uh, it's prepared <clears throat> and our teams are familiar with these tools too. so when people just switch from project to project if he knows the tools he can give any value to to the team or starting working at the first day yeah and just uh, bring the value 
and our tools are specialized. If you use specialized tools, of course, they are better than the generic one for your solution. <clears throat> okay. But <clears throat> when we started with our client to talk about reusability, and I think this part is uh, quite or very important from project uh, for project companies, so like software houses, rather not, not, not for a product one, because it's very specific, connected with a projects when they deliver projects for a client. So in our case, client is the owner of code. When you do the projects, in most cases, the client, your client would like to be the owner of the code. So if you reuse the internal framework, your client becomes the owner of your of this framework and you just can give it away because you can you can't use it in another projects it's about the law yeah uh, again if you start talking with uh, companies uh, from fortune 500 or banks or assurance company they have some list of approved tools frameworks and it's not surprise our internal frameworks was wasn't on their allow allow list yeah which we are able to do that. It causes us months, even sometimes, to add that. Second, our client asking, so we, you start using your internal frameworks. Are you going to share the code with us? Yeah, because we would like to, to know the code, even if we accept that you, you are going to use those frameworks. Uh, so what's about the sharing the code? Yeah, again, it's our IP. Who covers the maintenance cost? It's a, it's another question from our client because one is to to use it, yeah. Second, if you if you have a software, you have application to maintenance, yeah. And after the maintenance cost, there was uh, questions which was very important for our clients, yeah. How do you ensure us that we not be able to get it off your frameworks, yeah? Because if you're using internal frameworks, our clients was afraid that they have to use just us because just to other our competitors doesn't know those frameworks yeah so they will just get off and uh, they will have to invest a lot to beat new frameworks things like that so it's a problem for them too and i got another questions from our business value business side how much our internal ip are worth yeah so what's the question? So, okay, guys, you are going to use uh, your internal frameworks. So we are cheaper, we can deliver faster, and things like that. So it's it's speed up. So how much additional value we can get from our clients because we're using internal tools, yeah? And those calls that we always talk, talk and talk with clients. And we finalize that sometimes when you agree tools or we get some acceptance for our tools, we almost finishing sometimes project. So we started very late, produce a lot of technical depth, which we're trying to eliminate at at the end almost of the projects, yeah. And the cost was very, very high and you know, it, it wasn't a great way of delivery, yeah, software. So it's where we was with our framework tools usability. That was great, but there was a lot of issues to use them inside the projects. So what we decide, uh, what would what what we decide, and the answer was uh, quite strange maybe for you, but after analyzing everything, we say. There's no sense to have internal tools in this case. Let's open source our solution. Okay, it shows that we show for our competitors even, yeah, our IP. Yes, it's now, we re after this open sourcing, we read a blog how our open source tools are fine and really shows uh, or allow to solve problems. Uh, which the, on the clients, on our competitors' blogs, yeah, when they're writing about our open source tools. So we lost our IP, we share our IP with our competitors too, yeah, but what we what we have as uh, for us, 
as a bonus, yeah? So we solved our client's concern because uh, the first concern was client is the owner of the code and we can lose the, our internal framework, yeah? It's not true because it's open source, so it's, it's fine. Uh, amounts sometimes when we try to add in our internal tools to to allow this yeah in our clients again solve because uh, I don't know why but all those procurement securities uh, departments accept very fast open source tools it was just sometimes uh, a week where if we compare this week of waiting till months when we're trying to convince them to use and add to those is our internal tools. So it's a big win for us, yeah? You can wait a week, but you can't wait a few months. And again, our the, the questions about maintenance cost. Still, it wasn't the issue because, you know, we're trying to build some communities around that. And uh, even you know clients just uh, start using our competitors they have access to those code they can they could maintenance it yeah so first the maintenance uh, cost was lower and everyone could do that because the code was shared yeah and open source so open sourcing allow us to solve all those problems and start test automation here but Okay, but here are benefits, yeah? So we got some internal benefits, of course. Our people are proud now because, you know, they are famous, they do something which are can say about and can be recognized. And in fact, it's just our values. We always talk a lot about knowledge sharing, building communities and things like that. So we, saw, we got some internal benefits, especially for our engineering, yeah? But what cause? I had a chat with uh, one of uh, Cognified owners and he asked, okay, Zbyszek, you went open source, so how do how much money do you think we lost? Because we just could uh, get them from a client, yeah, like uh, additional money for a project, yeah? And then when I start trying to answer for them that, okay, and trying to calculate how much number, the number on the money, I realized that it's not true because what we achieved, we have a, uh, we're selling more test automation, in fact. Uh, we try, we're building the test automation infrastructure, yeah, because it's just not a code. You need to build infrastructure and everything. So, and then you have to maintenance it and things like that. In fact, we're understanding that our project scopes are bigger and bigger thanks for test automations and wide using of them and we get more money for those projects so as you see the answer is that we don't lost money maybe we not earn those bigger number but you know the revenue is almost on the same level but but we deliver the better code uh, we can start automation very fast or the, at the beginning of the projects. So we deliver better projects in those cases. And yeah, why just few few bullets just to summarize what I talk about. And yeah, additionally, we're selling the trainings. Yeah, because uh, if you are the specialized in something like open sourcing tools and you're starting to using your clients would like to have uh, a team too, and then you, you can you have to train your clients. So we're selling the trainings too. And as you see, open sourcing allow us to, to deliver something better and earn more money, which at the beginning it wasn't uh, it was questioned by our business. Okay, so we finalized the the, the two parts about open sourcing. And it's the last part now. It's about uh, delivering. So we deliver now more test automation at the beginning and things like that. And how we transform to deliver it, yeah? Because if you deliver, and, and there is a continuous delivery, of course, something around. So let's go to this part. I hope 
Okay, and I would like to start this part with uh, something with a square. This square I created nine years ago, and uh, in my article in testing experience, uh, maybe some some of you remember that this newspaper. And as you see, our very old approach, especially when we created less, was uh, totally on testers. So inside the team, we say the testers which working in the project team together with developers just do the maintenance. So if, if you need some, if something change, yeah, they just switching some XPath or things like that. But uh, test case, automated test was uh, created mostly on test cases by external team of testers, so which uh, weren't part of the project, yeah, or even uh, weren't part of a Scrum team. So they were they just working independently, and it's something that we work nine years ago. But when we start to, but to the, to deliver most more test automations, something changed, and in fact uh, our environment changed too. So we work a lot to improve quality of feature delivery by, by devs. Yeah, uh, our developers uh, interested in, our, in test automations. Yeah, they are they come to us uh, and say, guys, I would like to write few test cases for te automated test cases for my code. Yeah, for my feature. How I can do that? Can can you just do that? Uh, we change our definition of done. First, our definition of done was just to deliver feature, yeah? So feature is somewhere on production or staging, whatever. But uh, in many cases, uh, test automation was written later. So it's something like you have, uh, you deliver feature in a sprint uh, third and test automation in sprint, sprint four, yeah? Something like that. So we change that and we said, no, the feature is ready. When we are able to maintain it, maintenance it, so we adding this maintainability to our definition of done, which causes that we can't working in those cases that the test cases are written uh, later. Uh, we switch inside from testing to quality assurance. Yes, yeah? so our test engineers become rather quality assurance engineers, which will cooperate with devs to help them in testing or thinking about the quality rather than testing, yeah? And we start to introduce test pyramid. Yeah, so we understanding about this unit test, integration test, and uh, the end-to-end -end testing as less as possible. It caused that we starting to moving more and more test automation to the lower levels. And of course, continuous delivery appear. So when we were, when we, so eight years ago, we were here, yeah? So there was a testers who do automations and let's say writing new tests was outside the projects by external testing team. Now, after all those changes, where we are, every, everything is done internal. So inside the project, as you see, we move all, almost all creation and maintenance of test automation to developers. And QA is just ownership and give some support for devs. What it means, we don't have test automation engineers. We don't have our software developer in test. It's because we change our ways of working and we believe that it's better and it's work for us. Cool. So how it works now when we're thinking from uh, delivering test automation? So QA is the owner of uh, quality. So in our case, is the owner of test automation on different level and things like that. So he takes care that it has to be executed on something that we agree or believe uh, that it's, it's needed for those projects. Yeah. So. You can think that QA is something like a Scrum Master who, who works with a self-organized team. So yeah, so QA in this case, working with developers or supporting them or just uh, challenge them. Uh, 
how to write or take care that those test automation tests are written yeah on on something that we needed on the level we add uh, we change the definition of ready so in definition of ready we adding the test automation level so we say what we would like to automate and what and on which level and I believe that it's very difficult to do for the testers. Yeah, so developers know very well what we can cover on unit tests, what on integration tests, and things like that. Thanks to this, we adding uh, the cost uh, of test automations as a story points or whatever. Yeah, and uh, Dev QA do code reviews in both sides. So, so yeah, sometimes QA wrote some some tests. So then dev do the review. If developer wrote test automation scripts, in our QA do code review even, yeah? Uh, we have something like QA demo. So when the feature is ready, developer shows how it works uh, for, for test, the project manager, whatever. And uh, it doesn't show just only how this feature works, but shows how how test automation works yeah so what kind of test automation he wrote on which level and things like that so he ensures that we are able to maintain this feature on a expected level yeah dod i mentioned before and yeah and uh, automation is uh, a part is a part of the backlog yeah and technical depth yeah i i can say that there are a few times that we are not we say okay we deliver this automation later because there are some client ask to deliver it faster things like that but it means that uh, when we do that if we do that is as an exception which is very important it's just exception uh, we just uh, creating a task wrote some test automated scripts for this feature we're putting it to the backlog to the development backlog yeah so it's we prioritize it at the same as the new features and assign to the sprint and whatever but uh, adding the priority yeah? okay so what i would like to that you take your to, that you take away yeah, from my presentation first it's very important for me that uh, what we learned that test automation is not a business value uh, it don't bring any business value it's just one of solution but not the preferred one in many cases. Sometimes there are better solutions from architecture point of view or others that it's worth to use, not just writing this automation more and more and more. Yeah. Second is uh, about open sourcing. So it's worth to do that even if you are software house, whatever, open source, open doors, it really help you to deliver better projects, to talk with clients about that. And yeah, it's not it, it's not losing revenue. In many cases, you can take even additional revenue for for your company. And uh, it's very strange when you're talking about on uh, test testing conferences, yeah, especially on conference when there are a lot of people test automation engineers. What we would like to propose it's uh, moving test automation from tester to the whole team approach, yeah when the developers wrote test automation too when they are able to wrote a feature then run all those automation scripts see how his feature works or what breaks fix uh, fix this but in fact uh, if his feature brings some changes makes him responsible to implement those changes in test automation scripts too yeah and thank you so let's move to the question hey hi thank you so hi. much uh, for sharing your experience with us today um i would like to thank you and i would like to also encourage people if they have questions please post it in the q a section um i do see there was one question which was asked from um, agram uh, perhaps i missed a point uh, but that ip stands for uh, stands for in this talk okay yeah it's an intellectual yeah. property. So it means that it's uh, something that you own. Yeah, You are the owner of a code, you are the owner of solution or something like that. And if someone would like to use, you have to pay 
for you or you just keep it as your advantages or a customer, yeah? So just thinking uh, like intellectual property, something like that.